We also talk about energy flow when we talk about ecosystems. Specifically, what we talk about is trophic levels. And if you remember when we talked about the words autotroph and heterotroph, I specifically said that the word troph was really talking about energy. Right? So when we're talking about trophic levels, we're talking about levels based on their energy and how much energy is transferred from one organism to another. Our first level is often referred to as the autotrophs, the producers. This is, shouldn't be very surprising since producers are what typically start the food chain. As we continue, herbivores will eat the producers, right, or primary consumers, right? They're the first consumers in a chain, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, etc. Right? Typically, it's not really usually more than four levels. Right? Every now and then you may get a quaternary consumer, but it's not very common. So this picture here is kind of showing us what we mean by trophic levels. Well, what actually happens is that if you see the kilocalories, this is referring to how much energy each of these really actually contains. The grass contains the most energy. And if you think about it in terms of what you eat, we say that carbs, carbs usually have a lot of energy. You get tons of energy from carbohydrates. Well, think about where carbohydrates come from. Breads, right, are typically from grains, which are plants, right? Fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates. So it's important for us to think about that those are producers, right? They're coming from producers. Those organisms, right, the producers, have tons of energy because they're the first step. They're going to make their own energy, use a small amount, and then as the primary consumer feeds off of the grass, it takes in all of that energy. However, that primary consumer is going to need to use some of its own, right, of that energy. As it uses the energy, there's less available. So that when it moves on to the secondary consumer, right, there's going to be another amount of energy that's going to be used and so on and so on. So at each level, a little bit of energy is going to be used for life processes, right? For digestion, for heart rate, for breathing, right? for movement, for just typical life processes, the organism is going to need to carry out those processes and use the energy to do so. And as it uses the energy, it therefore contains less to pass on to its consumer. So consumers on the higher end of the energy pyramid for trophic levels really need to be thinking about the fact that they need to be eating more, right? They need to be consuming more of their food source because their food source really doesn't have as much bang for the buck. This slide just continues to show what I was explaining, right? We also have another concept, right, that plays into energy pyramids, food chains, however you really want to think about it. When we're talking about energy pyramids, we're really talking about energy flow. We have something that's called biomagnification. And biomagnification is the idea that as a substance moves through the food chain, moves up in the energy levels, it becomes magnified. So the idea um, of perhaps dumping a chemical, let's say that it is a pesticide, and we spray that pesticide all over our grass. Our grasshoppers are going to consume the grass. Therefore, the grasshoppers are going to have that pesticide inside of them. However, the grasshoppers aren't only going to eat one little teeny tiny blade of grass. They're going to eat multiple blades of grass, which means they themselves are going to have more of that pesticide than a blade of grass did. Then we have our secondary consumers. As our secondary consumers right, consume the primaries as they eat, they're not eating just one grasshopper. They're going to eat multiple, which means they themselves are going to have even more of that pesticide. Well, when we get up to our next level, our next level is going to eat even more. And as we move through the food chain, more and more and more of that chemical is building up in the organisms. And if you think about it, who is typically at the end of the food chain? All right, who typically do we stop with? Humans. So all of these chemicals that we're putting into our environment are ultimately frequently coming back to us. When we talk about food chains and food webs, I think that you guys should be relatively familiar with these. 
um, the really big thing is to understand that a food web is a more accurate representation of how energy is transferred within an ecosystem. That nothing, nothing really moves in that linear fashion like a chain. There are far too many organisms existing in an ecosystem for it to occur that simply. So the idea is that the cardinal is only being consumed by the fox isn't really necessarily true because there may be more than one consumer. Keep in mind, the arrow is the direction of energy flow, right? We're not drawing an arrow from the fox to the cardinal saying fox eats squirrel, right? That's not the idea. We're saying the energy flows from the cardinal to the fox. Right, so we're really looking at energy flow when we think about those arrows. This is just demonstrating two different types of food chains, one being obviously for land, the other for the ocean. All right. Reason that they're not that accurate? This is a more accurate representation. Food webs, it's messy, it's confusing. Everything doesn't only have one food source. Organisms eat many different things depending on what's in, in their environment. So the food web is a more accurate representation. 